go to West End Avenue. Take it easy, sister. Let me go! You can't get away with this. Who's going to stop it? When Captain Regan hears about it, you'll find out quick. Well, maybe he won't hear about it. Now, come on, be smart. Relax. Ah! Turn her up, aren't you, fellas? Better not stick your nose in this, pal. Go on and beat it for James, my wife. Oh. Oh. I never did like to see a girl manhandle. Turn her loose. Sit tight. Say, nice play with you, Cut. Are you really married to that bird? No. Let me see your shoulder. I'm all right. Hey. Better get you to a doctor. Let's wait for the cops and tell what happened. Let them find out that's what they paid for. You'll be as good as new by tomorrow. You all right? Well, it takes more than this to get me down, Doc. <laughs> How much do I owe you? Well, I, uh... Oh, that's all right. Glad to help out. You work around here? Oh, I just got in yesterday from Pennsylvania. From Pennsylvania? Yeah, Freeport. That's a mining town. Say, Doc, you ever been down on the shaft? Me? Certainly not. Oh, you ought to try it sometime. Just the first levels, of course. Takes experienced man for the bottom level. Doubtless. Good day, Miss Elliot. Goodbye, Doctor. And thanks. So that's the name. Miss Elliot. Joe, so visiting minor. Nick's good enough for me. <laughs> OK, Nick. What are you doing this far from home? Oh, I just wanted to see if it was true what they say about sunshine. Nice place you have here. Yeah. Hey, now that we're acquainted, you might tell me what that scrap was about this afternoon. Just a couple of muggers trying to get away with something. Well, what's the idea of holding out on the cops? It's still against the law to kidnap people and shoot up strangers, isn't it? I'm going to let you in on something, Mick. Nobody got shot this afternoon, understand? No. Not even a little bit. You will if you think it over. So long, and thanks a million. Okay, Joe. That's the way you want it? When am I going to see you again? You can look for me someday on one of those bottom levels. What about him? I'll tell you later, Kepper. Sorry you're leaving, Nick. Who said he was leaving? Wait a minute. You've got this all wrong. Think so? He pulled me out of a tight spot this afternoon. You mean he got you in one? You cheap little too tight. You don't know what you're talking about. It's nothing like that. Well, I got eyes. I can Same, see. Mr. I'll get to you later. Red. Kepper, why do you always have to act like a perfect set? Sure. I've got a notion to... Don't even try it, buddy. All right, let's hear the rest of it. Better be good. Okay. If you don't mind strangers listening in. A couple of Eddie Tano's gorillas grabbed me as I was getting out of a cab this afternoon. And if this guy hadn't happened along, I wouldn't be here. No kidding. What'd he do? He used his fists and took a slug in the shoulder besides. I brought him here to your place so Doc could fix him up. Or should I have let him go to the receiving hospital and spill his story? Okay, if that's the way it was. Hey, mister, you do all right. Shake. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Say, take it easy, brother. I really did get winged. Red Graham is the moniker. Hi, Red. And this is Spudsy Baker. Mine's Nick Allen. How are you, Nick? Say, I'd like to have a crack at that Tarno gang myself. You must have had a lot of fun pushing those guys well, around. Well, I did huh? a little bit. I mean, <laughs> just the same, you shouldn't have brought him up here. Why not? Because nobody but you and these two mugs know this place. Of course, working for Capri and his interest in following my own profession, but it pays a lot better dough. And what is your profession? I'm just the best cook in town, that's all. That's his story, and he's stuck with it. You work for him, too? Yeah. Say, maybe you guys could get me a job. What does he do? You're telling me you never heard of Capo Regan? No. <laughs> of all the dumb guys... Hey, Spudsy, come here, take a look. Capo, there's a guy down the street. He's awfully busy. if I ever saw one. Hey! Get a look at this. Well, ain't that funny? The guy down there in the gray suit is the guy that blamed me this afternoon. So you think that's funny? 
I told you you shouldn't have brought this lug up here. Karma's been followed you and tipped off the cops. But I didn't know that anyone was... You never know anything. Now we got a lamb. Car ready? Ready, boss. What about him? Looks like we'll have to make it a party. afternoon trying to assist the police in a raid. Suspect number one, Kappa Reagan. Number two, Josephine Elliott. Number three, Red Graham. Number four, Spudsy Baker. Number five, unidentified man. Height six feet three and a half inches. Weight 175 pounds. Gray eyes, dark hair. Description of others in police circular. That is all. Well, that's enough. They haven't caught Kappa yet. And they won't. That guy knows his way around. What's wrong, Red? I don't know. Sounds like a bearing. Make mine rare with lots of gravy. Southern Division are advised to be on the lookout for a car containing four members of the Regan gang. Last seen traveling west on Highway 63. License number unknown. That is all. It's nice to know we're attracting so much attention. But Kappa shot Bat Ellison, not us. Ever hear of a line called accessory to murder? You mean we? Yeah, we. They can't find Kappa, so they'll turn the state upside down trying to knock us off. Looks like we're sunk, all right. And what is it, a bearing? Yeah, we'll have to lay up somewhere while I work on it. We might go to the Ritz. I hear they've got lovely rooms there. Hey, there's a little farmhouse up the road. Yeah? Can I look the place over? Nobody can see the car from the road. That's a cinch. Ain't nobody got to go to work on it. In the meantime, we ought to get some sleep. I've got to hand it to you, Nick. You sure think of everything. Come on. Hey, you can give me a call for 6.30, kid, and I'm gonna hit the hay. You want hay, look out in the barn. This is my bed. Oh, you think so? You're both wrong. Joe gets it. Yeah, there you are. If you'd have been a gentleman like me, Nick wouldn't have had to speak to you. Come on, we'll find some place to sleep. There you are, lady. Best in the house. There's your lighting system. Hot and cold running water and uh, swell ventilation. Nice. Looking for somebody? No, but if I had something to cook, I could get breakfast if I had a fire. Yeah, and if there was a cafeteria across the street, maybe we could get some hot cakes and coffee. Uh... Good morning. Well. I'm glad you think so. Hold it, hold it. There's a car coming. Nobody lived here. Nobody does. That is, nobody but me. 
Something I can do for you, officer? You might let me have a little water for our car. The engine's overheated. Sure, help yourself. I, uh... <laughs> you must not have been here very long, son. The well's over here. That's right. Of course. Jimmy, bring the car up. How long did you say you've been staying here? I didn't. You see, uh, I'm looking for work, and last night I found there was nobody living in the house, and I thought it'd be all right to sleep inside. Where are you from? Pennsylvania. Well, watch your cigarettes. That old house would go up pretty quick if a fire got started. Thanks for the tip, officer. If you got anything to do, go ahead. We'll take care of this. Okay. So long. So long, son. Good luck. What did he say? He said it was all right. It must be. They're driving away. Well, shake again, kid. I couldn't have handled that better myself. Yeah, but give yourself credit. You might have done worse. Anyway, they've gone. I'll fix that. What about Red? You can't do that. But you can't let him bark. If I can get rid of the cop, I can get rid of him. in the joint to eat. Oh. Either I gotta get some food in my stomach or cut another notch in my belt. Maybe I could walk to town and buy something to eat. Hey, Big Shot, don't push your luck. It might not hold. The sooner we get out of here, the better. Come on, let's tear into that car. All right. St. Bernard's that bought food to starving people. <laughs> Get a fire going, Fuzzy. Can you cook rabbit stew? Stop asking them riddles. Didn't I cook on a hamburger joint for two years? Give me that rabbit. You better get inside, kid. The roads are swarming with cops. Wait a minute, Red. That dog must live around here someplace. So what? Well, maybe I can find a farmhouse and buy something to eat. Yeah, but that's taking a long chance. Yeah, we gotta eat. Tell everybody to wait like it back. Well, come on, kid. Why don't you swim across? I can't. I never learned. Is there another bridge anywhere near? There's not another bridge, but there's a log farther downstream that goes all the way across. Thanks. If you fall, shall I rescue you? Well, I'd do better if you didn't talk. I think. I hope you're satisfied. Well, I didn't touch you. You ought to be there. Well, you ought to know how to swim. <laughs> Mr. 
Goodbye now. Goodbye. direct me to the nearest town? My daughter will direct you, if you'll wait. Uh, won't you draw up a chair and sit down? Thanks. Down, Bill. My name is Adams. Mine is, uh... Mine's Smith. Smith. Fine old name. You're traveling by automobile, Mr. Smith? Yes, the very as we were until last night. You see, our car broke down and we had a bunk at an old house across the river. I suppose you and your party are headed for the spring. The spring? Yes, a lot of people go there this time of year. Oh, the spring. Yes. We'd have been there by now if our car hadn't broken down. Nice dog you have. Bill. <laughs> he is a very important member of the family. Must be a lot of company for you out here. We don't get many visitors. Though I believe more people would come if they could only see this valley. What do you think of it, Mr. Smith? Oh, it's all right. Well, it seems rather more than that to us. You see, almost anything will grow out here. Anything? Corn, barley, oats, alfalfa. Men and beasts can live off this valley. Oh, I thought the fields had to be plowed and planted. They do. And cultivated. What about the weeds? Weeds are like a lot of outside influences, I've found. Unless you guard against them, they'll destroy your field. He must have a hard time getting people to run the place. My daughter manages that. <laughs> when she's not off swimming. Swimming? I bet she spends a lot of her time swimming. She's quite an expert. I'd like to stay to meet her, but you see, I've got to get to town and back with some food before night. Town and back? Well, you can't walk that distance. You go right through the house to the kitchen and help yourself. I will if you let me pay you. Oh, oh. This old house has held a lot of guests, Mr. Smith, but not for pay. Hospitality is a privilege. Just as you say, then. And thanks. Bill Talbot, is it me or the old man that's crazy? Are you looking for something? Ah, hello, Bill. 
Oh, so it is you. I'm afraid it is. May I help you? Yes, I wanted to buy some food, and your father told me to help myself with it. But the cupboard's pretty bare, is that it? I'm sorry. But he seemed to think that... Did you talk to him about things around here? Yes, I did. And he had rather a funny slant. Yes, I guess it does seem funny to an outsider. How long has this been going on? Going on? Yes, him thinking the fields are plowed and the flowers growing and everything. My father lost his sight five years ago. And he never found out that... That things have gone to rack and ruin? No. You've got a lot of nerve. As a matter of fact, I've been pretty scared at times. And you've managed this all yourself? It has been Fred Peters. He's the one who took Father North to get Bill. Say, look. Occasionally, I get ideas. Now, what kind of ideas? Well, my name is Smith. Nick Smith. You see, we were headed to the Springs on a little vacation. There's four of us. Two of my business partners and a girl. She's my cousin. And we heard the Springs was rather crowded. Well, why couldn't you put us up for a while? Oh, I don't see how I could possibly put you up. Oh, we'll pay you. Pay anything you want. And besides, there's a lot of people that keep some aboard us. I know, but there's nothing for you to do. No amusement. No That's nothing. exactly what we want. Peace and quiet and nobody to bother us. Well, yes, you do have ideas, Mr. Smith. But I don't quite know what to say. Then it's settled. We leave the car where it is until the bridge is fixed. Pay your month's board in advance or move in tonight. Well, now, wait a minute. What will your friends think about this idea? Will you leave something up to me? As much as we can use the money, there's still father. Will you also leave father up to me? You're awfully nice, Mr. Smith. And uh, this is in no way an apology, but I'm sorry I made you fall off that log. Well, that's all right. Try it again sometime and I might fall harder. Hey, you know what's wrong with that steak, don't you, sister? No, what? Move over. Look. You have to scoop up the gravy like this and pour it over the top. That's what they call basting, see? Sounds like you've had experience. He has, but not in cooking. Where's the pepper? Uh, here. Ah, boy. Got a little too much gravy in there. Well, pour some out. That's what I'm gonna do. Hey! What are you trying to do, boil me in oil? 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 Hey, got any olive oil? Yes. Here it is. Oh, boy. Is this stick gonna roll him in the ass? Roll him in a hospital, you mean? Seems as if you're going to be quite a help around here. You bet your boots. Hey, give me that apron, will you? Oh, my stick! Woo! Is this gonna be something? Woo, woo! Any messages for Kepper? No, what are you doing? Telling him where we are? Sure. Giving him all the load down on the cows and chickens. Well, I hope he's as comfortable as we are. Yeah? Yeah. Beats sleeping in deserted farmhouses and having the cops chase us around, doesn't it? Let me ask you something, big shot. Now that you've got us settled in the hay, how long do you think we're going to stay here? Until it's safe, look, Joe. If we were out on the road right now, the cops would get us sooner or later. But nobody ever comes here. No, nobody would. What's there to do if they get here? Talk to an old duck with a screwy notion, uh, feel the weeds his way tying corn. If they want that kind of company, they go to a place with padded cells. Well, the old man's all right. He's happy thinking that stuff. I have a notion to bust his play out right over his head, making us act like a bunch of nurses. Sure, you couldn't do that. Why not? I'm not like you. I don't care what that silly girl thinks. But I do object people expecting me to be crazy, too. Joe, Joe, come here. Did you see him gauge the height of that limb? What's so wonderful about that? Watch him. Oh, boy. Here's a steak you're gonna love to touch. And bring me a bicarbonate of soda on the side. Why don't you stop? For a guy as unparticular as you are, you sure do a lot of complaining. Who's unparticular? You are. I suppose you forgot them bum oysters you bought that night we were celebrating after busting up Eddie Tarno slot machines, huh? 
Well, you, you know Eddie Tarno. The guy that asked us to help him. Sure, sure, I remember. Don't we all? Well, we've certainly grown into a large family, haven't we? And you're all very welcome. Show me them spuds, Red. Allow me to pass them, Spotsy dear. Come on, quick, kid, and give me here. Lord, we ask thy blessing on this food. And thy help for all these people gathered here. Give them judgment. Teach them the value of thy love. We ask these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Here. Good morning. Nice day for, uh, for exercise, isn't it? Is that what you're doing? You bet. I like to do things that keep me out in the sunshine. I had a job once where I got very little of it. In a factory? Sort of. Linda! Oh, there's Fred Peters. Peters? Yes, you remember. I told you about him. Oh. Whoever he is, he looks like trouble. Linda says it's Fred Peters. Oh, good. You'll all like Fred, I'm sure. Hello, Linda. Yeah, I'll start the gray when that bridge is fixed, so I can drive up in the car. They're supposed to start work on it next week. Did you hear about our summer boarders? Yes, I came out especially to meet them. They're angels in disguise for you as well as for me. How do you mean? Well, with the money I make, I can pay something on that note. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about that. <laughs> Hello, Fred. Hi, Mr. Adams. Hello, Bill. I want you to meet some friends of ours. Miss Elliot. How do you do? Mr. Brady. Hi. Mr. White and Mr. Uh, Smith. Hi, Mr. Smith. I'm Smith. Sit down, Fred, and tell us the news. What's going on in town? Oh, they must accept the Cap Regan scare. Cap Regan? Who's he? He's a racketeer. He and his gang killed a man. For a while, we thought they were headed our way. Mr. Peters is mayor of Middleton as well as president of our most substantial bank. Is that so? Did they catch Regan? No, I guess it was just a rumor. Nevertheless, I told Charlie to keep his eyes open. <laughs> Fred, Charlie couldn't recognize a criminal if he saw one, much less arrest him. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like it here, Miss Elliot? I love it. We all love it because it's so peaceful and so quiet. Yeah, and no one ever drops in. They were on their way to the springs when their car broke down. Well, you're in good hands. You ought to enjoy your stay. Oh, Mr. Peters, you don't know how much I'm enjoying it. Excuse me. It's time for my mess. Certainly. What are you trying to do? Get that guy suspicious with your wisecracks? I suppose you'd like to have me make a play for that small town banker. Well, it might not be a bad idea. Quit thinking of gags. It's okay by me, but he's liable to go back and pop off to his friend Charlie about us. So what do we do about it? I'll tell you what you could do. You could be nice to him. Sell him the idea that we're really summer boarders. Get his mind off Kappa Riga. That might be to our advantage. <laughs> we don't get many summer visitors around here, Miss Elliot. It is Miss Elliot, isn't it? Yes. Do have some more lemonade, Mr. Peters. Oh, thank you. Well, it was a lucky break that I dropped in this afternoon. You should look after your business and family. Oh, my business takes care of itself. I haven't any family. No family? How sad. Oh, it's not so sad. I'm too snooty, I guess. I've never been able to find a girl who would fit into the house I'm planning to build. Hmm, surely you approve of some of the people around here. Oh, most of them. Would you care to meet some of them? Oh, no, no, thank you. Uh, this summer, I, I just want to rest. But it would be all right if I dropped in occasionally myself, wouldn't it? Mr. Peters, you're different. You two like to go swimming? The only thing you could interest me in is... Linda's going to give me a lesson. How sweet. Why don't you stay for dinner, Fred? Thanks, maybe I will. Do you believe in summer romances, Miss Elliot? After what I've seen around here, I'm ready to believe in anything. The book says six inches.
Certainly is a relief to get this car here. Yeah. Wouldn't be much trouble to get this tractor running. All it needs to clean out the gas line, get a new mag, rewire it, and maybe do some retiming. You gonna tackle it? Nah, too much trouble. Seen Spudsy? Not since the morning. That's a good boy, Bill. Yes, sir. That's a good boy. Yes, sir. Now we get some more here. What are you doing? Digging for oil? No, I'm planting potatoes, can't you see? That is if that book's on the level. They're getting along great, aren't they? Sunshine does wonders. You bet. You mind if I stretch all six of my feet out of it? Not if you can find a place to put them. Have I seen that dress before? I bought it yesterday when I went into town. Almost matches the flowers, doesn't it? Does it? You look great. I mean, a girl always looks great with a lot of flowers. Are you sure that sun isn't too strong? I could soak it up the rest of my life. Come on over here and sit down and take a load off your feet. It's time to get dinner ready, and these are for the table. Well, let's Spudsy worry about dinner. Fred Peters is coming over. Yeah? You know, Nick, I think Fred's in love. Who with? Your cousin. My cousin? Oh, you mean Joe. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure. Well, what makes you think he feels like that? A girl can usually tell. She can? I think so. Say, how do you think I feel? You? You're not interested in anyone. Nice talk from an expert. Did you get my paint? Yes, I did. I want to talk to you about that and about a lot of other things. You're paying board here, Nick, and there's no reason for you to do all of this. Yeah, I know. But if I want to get a little exercise painting the house, I don't see any reason why I can't. And what do you want to make out of it? Uh, uh, nothing. I'll see you at dinner. Telling you eggs is in my department. I don't need help from no amateur. They quit talking like. Well, get away from that incubator. Anyway, you never were a mother. What do you know about baby? Hey, Nick, will you make her mind her own business? I sent for this hatch and eggs. You and Joe sent your own quarrel. How many have hatched out anyway? Twenty so far. Look, there's another one coming through now. Can you imagine anything like that? Hey, we'll soon have all the chickens we can eat. Eat? You cannibal? Yes? I'm Mike Grayson. I guess you heard about me. I'm afraid I haven't, Mr. Grayson, but what can we do for you? Regan sent me. Regan? Yeah, don't try to give me the worst, Grandpa. Where's red in the mouth? Of course, I should have known. But I think if you'll just look around, Mr. Grayson, uh, you'll find them somewhere over near the chicken coops. Okay. Here's another one. 
breaking through. Get a load of that, will you, Red? Them little guys never had an old lady. Hey, you lugs. Hiya, Mike. Oh, Mike. How are you, kid? <laughs> Where'd you get Where'd the you ring up? <laughs> well, I gotta hand it to you. I couldn't have found a better hideout myself. In fact, I had trouble locating it. Pretty slick idea, this summer boarders racket. What do you want, Mike? Me? Nothing at all. But Capper does. He wants you back on the main stem. What about the cops? You, Alan? Yeah. Forget it, the heat's off. Hey, what's the matter with you guys? Don't you want to come back with me? Sure, we want to go back all right, Mike. How is Kepper? You should see him. And coin and dough. That's swell. And if you ask me, crazy to see you, Joe. That's swell too, Mike. Kepper always did not always way around. Better he clean up this year, huh? Plenty. But he's got a soft spot for you guys and he wants you in. I'll say one thing for Kepper, he always paid off like a slot machine. All right, shake a leg, Ollie, and let's get going. Hey, right now? You don't think I want to hang around this dump any longer than I have to, do you? Of course not, Mike. Uh, you wouldn't like it here at all. You better get started. What do you mean, get started? You're going back with me. That wouldn't be smart, would it? It, uh, it might attract attention. You better go now, and uh, we'll come in a day or so. Yeah, she's got the right idea. Okay. But if I was you, I wouldn't be too long, understand? We understand. So long. So long. Uh, I'll tell Kappa what you said. Well, what about it? I don't see how I can leave like a ten potatoes, Doug. A few more days and I'd have the windmill working. I did so want to see those baby chicks get a decent start in life. Maybe we better not leave them till next week. Yeah, that'd give us a little more time, wouldn't it? Of course. That's right. We won't leave till next week. Say, there's another one. Good old Bill. Come on now, you'll never learn to swim well if you just lie around and float all day. I don't want to learn how to swim well. It's too much work. The trouble with you is you're lazy. I'm not lazy. I like the sun in my face. Coming in? Not until you've finished your lesson. Oh, you're getting stubborn, eh? Yep. What a life. You can't stand up to go paddle. You're such a good swimmer, why don't you go closer to shore? I owe my life to you. You must think I'm awfully dumb, Nick. Why? I knew you were clowning all the time. You did? Sure, I'm your teacher. Then why'd you jump in? Wasn't that what you wanted me to do? Yeah. Well, I did. Nick, remember that day in the garden when I said a girl can usually tell? Mm -hmm. I can tell. You mean I don't have to go through the 
The usual, uh... You mean I don't have to tell you I love you and everything? That's what I mean. Great. I'm gonna like being married to you. I could have dressed three times by now. Where have you been? Nick, there's this. All right, let them. You don't want your friends. Yes, I know. I just saw Fred drive up. Who was with him? But they're not with Fred. They're friends of yours. Friends of mine? Linda, I'm taking you and your father for a drive. Do you want your coat? I thought it'd be nice for Nick to have a visit with his friends alone. Nick, see you later. Yeah. What's the matter, Bill? Don't you want to come? We don't need him. Let him stay if he wants to. Goodbye, Bill. We hoped you'd get our slant, Kappa. But as long as you didn't, we might as well lay it on the line. Something's happened and we want to stay. Don't turn hick, is that the idea? You can call it that if you want to. Let Bill in. Who's Bill? The dog. Okay. What about the rest of you? Well, Kepper, whatever Red says goes for me, too. You cheap, chiseling lot of double-crossers. After I protect you, split with you, and give you the best I got, you let a lot of half-wits sell you on a reform act. Now I need you, you give me the go-by for a dopey old man and a gaga dame. Wait a minute, Regan. Keep the Adams family out of this. They have nothing to do with it. Oh, haven't they? I happened to be looking out the window a few minutes ago. You're like I'm young, don't you, Alan? <laughs> Oh, God, I'll mess him up. Easy, boy. Easy, boy. Easy, boy. Watch yourself, Nick. Well, the way, Alan, have you told her there's still a warrant out for your arrest? I'll tell her. Seems to me they ought to know who's hiding out in their house. You open your mouth and I'll... Yo, what? You don't want them to know, is that the idea? Listen to me, smart guy. You and nobody else is going to walk out on me unless I say so. Understand that? Pack up, all of you. Kepper, can't you see they don't belong in your mob anymore? Why can't you let it go at that? But that ain't the way I want it. Well, I'm sorry. I gotta start supper. Too bad she ain't staying. Wait a minute. Maybe the rest of them are screwy, but I ain't ready to believe it about you. Come on outside. I want to talk to you. Take it easy, boys. Keep your eyes open. shouldn't happen to us. Joe, we've come a long way together. Yeah, a long way. Wait till some of these new mugs I've tied in with get a slant at you. I'll have to strong arm them out of the way. No, you won't, Kepper. Well, you don't know these new guys I'm working with. But I know you. I know you plenty. What are you talking about? You and I are washed up, Kepper. Now listen, Joe. I've listened to you for a long time. Now I'm going to listen to something I've never heard before. Something you wouldn't know about. I hear it here in these fields, in that old house, all around this place. And it's telling me that I'm not what I thought I was. For the first time in my life, I know what it's all about. I'm not Kepa Regan's girl. I belong on this farm, and I'm staying. I get it. I got a squint at that hick banker that's nuts about you. You mean Fred? Who else? But, but he and I, you we have... You crazy, hopped-up little fool. Get in that car. 
No, Kappa. Get that car out there. I'm not going. and an ex-friend. They passed us on the road. And were they traveling? They had a date. Uh, there was an accident while you were gone. An accident? Yes. Nick was fooling around with his gun. He dropped it. Bill got hurt. Bill? Yo, what did happen? Like I say, Nick was cleaning his gun. He didn't know it was loaded. But I've got to hand it to him. He's a pretty good vet. Something's worrying you, isn't it? No. I'm not very good at saying this sort of thing, but Joe, will you marry me? You really mean that, don't you? Yes, I do. Oh, sweet. But I can't. You don't know anything about me. It doesn't make any difference. Yes, it does. Believe me. I know best. After I told you, you'll understand. Five years ago, I worked in a check room in a hotel. There was a man who had lots of money and knew all the ropes. But you it... Let me finish, Fred. At first, I thought it was just a lot of laughs. Then I fell for him. He wasn't like you. But now, you don't care for him now, do you? No. Not now. But it's too late. There you are. Feel better now, old fellow? He's going to be all right, isn't he? I think so. Well, don't look so sad about it. He doesn't hold it against you. Yes, I know. After all, I was careless of me. Poor old boy. No need to blame yourself, son. Everything has its reason. We may not be able to see it or understand it, but it's there. Thanks, Pop. Did you and your friends get everything talked over before they left, Nick? Yes, everything. Good. Well. He's way past my bedtime. Good night, Pop. Good night. Hurry up and get well, Bill. Good night. Good night, Pop. Good night. Come on, Lud. And I ain't in the mood for no snoring tonight. Good night. You'd better turn in, too. It's getting late. What are you up to? Who, me? Nothing. What about Linda? Linda? Yes. If they ever pick us up, where will she stand then? Maybe they'll never pick us up. And maybe they will. Well? Oh, I know what you're going to say, is that she loves you and that she'll wait for you. And when you've served your term and you come out filled with murder and hate, she'll marry you. Nick, will you let her do that? Why not? After all, I'm not a criminal. And besides, we stand an even chance of her not finding out about us. Nobody around here suspects us. 
Sometimes I wonder just how much Pop really knows. Pop? You're crazy. He's blind. Yes, his eyes are blind. But did it ever strike you, Nick, that he's blind only to the things he doesn't want to see? Good night. I hope you haven't lost your touch. I could open that cracker box with a pocket knife. Okay, get going. Don't forget this. It came from the direction of the bank, Fred. to get, Fred. Oh, I can't tell until I check up. Maybe uh, 5,000. Hello. Operator, this is Sheriff Thornton speaking. The bank's been robbed. Call every sheriff's station in a radius of 50 miles. Tell them to block every road. I'll give you information later. Hey, look at that. Where'd you find it? Over in front of the safe. Ever seen this before, Fred? writing on it. Telegraph Road to Junction. Turn right. Three miles to bridge. 500 yards to White Gate. That's the way to Adams Farm. That's right. It sure is. Let me see that again. It's a police circular. They must have sent it out when they were looking for the Caporegan gang. That's their pictures. Maybe one of the gang dropped it. Sally, I know these people. They've been living at the Adams Farm all summer. Say, he's right. That guy there has been to my store a couple of times for fencing and paint. Are you sure, boys? I only wish I wasn't. Come on. What is it, fella? You better take it easy, son. All right, boys, get the rest. You mind telling me what this is all about? You're under arrest. What is this, a joke? I'm afraid not, Nick. Get in there with the other. What's going on, Fred? Well, something happened tonight. Who is it? What's the matter? It's me, Mr. Adams. Sheriff Thornton. I've got bad news. Bad news? These people posing as summer boarders belong to the Caporegan gang. The police are on the trail, so they hid out here until things cooled off. But they've done nothing wrong since they've been here. I wouldn't be too sure, Mr. Adams. The Middleton Bank was robbed tonight. Fred, you don't think... I don't know what to think, except... Charlie, give me that police circular. Where'd you get this? Whoever robbed the bank dropped that when they left. And don't stall. The directions to this farm are written here on the margin. Kappa thought of everything, didn't he? Wait a minute. No one from my house robbed that bank tonight. Well, how do you know? You couldn't see them leave. Oh, true. But sometimes blindness makes the other senses more acute, Charlie. I found I couldn't sleep tonight. So I heard many things that someone else might not have noticed. My daughter sobbing. Nick walking the floor until just a few minutes before you came. Red and spudsy. <laughs> trying to see which could snore the loudest. No one left this house tonight. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That doesn't change the fact that these people are wanted. 
I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Adams. Come on, let's get started. Wait a minute. You can't take them away. They haven't done anything. They've done plenty, Miss Adams. They're wanted on a murder charge. Don't let that worry you, kid. We never murdered nobody, and they can't give us more than a year. Say, I can do that standing on my head. Sure, we'll be back here, sister. And don't let no cheap mechanic touch that windmill till we get here. Just keep your tin up, honey. We'll be seeing you. Pop, tell whoever takes care of them potatoes this winter not to let them freeze, will you? All right, Spencer. So long. Come on, funny face. Joe, don't hate me too much. I don't hate you. And the new house will be ready when... Goodbye, Fred. Nick. Before you go... I love you. So you've decided you love me. Get a load of that, Sheriff. That's pretty good for a summer's work, isn't it? Don't be a sap. Do you think I'd waste my time on a baby-faced kid like you? I'm going back to the mob. They're all I've ever known and all I ever want. Well, so long, Pop, and thanks for the vacation. Come on, Sheriff, let's get out of here. Somehow, I don't believe what he said. My dear, if you don't believe it, keep it from being true. an amazing story, Miss Adams. One that contradicts every belief I've built up in the ten years I've been in this office. And the one I personally don't believe. Frankly, it's ridiculous, Miss Adams. A mob like Regan's doesn't go soft. I'm not in the habit of telling things that aren't true. But I can vouch for everything she said, sir. I saw what happened at the Adams farm. And do you expect us to believe that those mobsters built fences, planted fields, and repaired a house just for the fresh air, huh? Yes. If they did, it was a part of their scheme to make a setup for themselves. But you don't know these people. They didn't have to do that. Let me ask you one thing, Miss Adams. Why did they do it? Because my father, in his blindness, believed that nothing had changed on that farm. And it pleased them to make his dream come true. Now look here, Baldwin. Just because a girl comes and makes a pretty plea for a bunch of mugs doesn't change the fact that they've broken the law. Our job is tough enough without having to listen to stuff like this. I'm afraid he's right, Chief. Anyway, it's on your shoulders. Glad to have met you, Miss Adams. You must believe me, Mr. Baldwin. If you prosecute Nick and Joe, it wouldn't be fair. You're too intelligent not to understand that. Just what is it I don't understand, Miss Adams? How many times have you heard men promise to change and be different if they were given another chance? <laughs> Far too many, I'm afraid. These people aren't making any promise. They've already changed. I suppose I'm making a mistake, but... it might be a far greater mistake to send these people to prison. Red and Spudsy will have to throw themselves in the mercy of the court. But in the case of the girl and Nick Allen, I guess a suspended sentence might be enough for this office to ask. Excuse me. Hello. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, all right, Fred. Nick Allen has escaped. Escaped? Oh, but he couldn't. He wouldn't do a thing like that.
never figure out whether you gals like the noise this stuff makes or the way it tastes. Maybe it's cause the bubbles tickle your nose. Say, you think that's the dress you got on? Give us another month and I'll show you some real clothes, baby. I can't go to the opera and promises, Mike. Hey, you think you're smart, huh? Well, let me tell you something. We're going places. Not the places you think. Come on, reach all of you. Did you hear me, Mike? Hello? Give me police headquarters. Hello, police headquarters? Give me Chief Lang in the Homicide Division. Easy, Mike. Hello, Chief. This is Nick Allen. Yeah, Nick Allen. I'm holding Kappa Regan in his mob. Uh-huh. At the Lido Arms Apartments. Okay. Get back there. You haven't got anything on me. I'm getting out of here. Take it easy, sister. Alan, I've always liked you. You've got something. There's still time for all of us to get out of here. We're staying. If the cops pick us up, they'll take you along. Okay, by me. Look, Alan, I'm doing pretty well. Business is picking up. I'll split with you. No. 